going to the bus tour. Things with the habitats, you can also find it there. It can be wrapped in water feature for the little ones as well. Just for safety information, folks, would you ask that you please keep your arms, legs, hands, feet, and all other body parts inside of the bus at all times. And if you would like to stand up at any time during the tour, please feel free to do so. Just make sure to hold on to one of the railings around you. Please keep your feet planted firmly on the floor of the bus and not on the benches. And I do recommend that you pull out those uh, partially submerged in the water. You'll be able to see the top part of their, uh, their head. Now again, we do have Kunani and Amashle in there. Just keep in mind, folks, I am not calling the hippos back because that would be hippocritical. For those of you folks on the lower level, you might ask, if I integrate a different species into the habitat, we are allowing the animals to develop the same social skills just like they would out in the wild. It also serves as an enriching experience for them because they are encouraging their natural behavior of them interacting with other species, and occasionally you will catch them chasing each other, running around with each other, or even grooming each other as well. Give you all an idea as to how we're built. We're kind of built like a bull, so right now we're at the very bottom of the bowl, and in direction you're going from the very beginning of our short, that's because they're a different species. They are the and way to remember them they are a lot less pink than any other species of flamingos. The reason for that is because they are not eating as many crustaceans as the American flamingos. They're eating a lot more of the plants, algae, and vegetation in their native habitat. Up in the hill on the right hand side, we've got the birds of prey birds that was originally built in the 1940s. Oh, this is an updated version of the lake that was opened about four or five years ago, but you can still find the Indian condors and the puppies even up there. Then back on our left, we've got our African marsh habitat with our greater white pelicans along with our cormorants. Uh, and then right in front, we do have this lake, uh, the black coast we go through roost on top. That is King Forest, or make love once you enter the area. That'll take you over to the Elephant Odyssey, which is exactly where we're entering right now. And coming up on our left, is one of my favorite animals to point out on my tours. These guys are our rock high rats. They kind of look like a large hamster, maybe even a rat or a beaver. Anyone want to guess who they're most closely related to? The rats are a good guess, they're not related to rats. Think a lot bigger than that. Beaver is also a good guess. They're not related to beavers, so they're actually most closely related to the elephants. Yeah, the reason for that is because they've got two tiny little tusks on the inside of their mouths. Uh, they also have very similar skull structures, and their feet are similar to the elephants as well. Which I know it is kind of hard to see from here. Uh, there's a couple more habitats over in the garage. You get a lot closer and check out those tusks. But along with the rock hyraxes, the manatees are the two closest little relatives left to the elephants. On the right hand side, we have our beautiful African lions. We've got Ernest, Emmis, and Elvin. You know, Ernest is up on top of the platform on the right hand side of the habitat, but he's not in the parking lot. We got a uh, really loud roar, if you will. Uh, as we continue down through Elephant Odyssey, looks like we have. Uh, we do specialize in geriatric care down here at the zoo for our elephants. Our breeding facility is up for safari parks, so that's where we have our babies and our breeding females and our younger elephants as well, uh, which I'm hoping is to be 45 to 50 years old as we have extended her life just a little bit. Now, right before we get to the other half of the elephant habitat, let's take a look at some birds. We've got Stella and Charlie down here, our secretary birds. So we're both going to be in the back right hand corner of the habitat. Uh, the secretary birds. So these guys are close living relatives to eagles and hawks, and they are some of the birds with the longest legs inside of the waiting room area for the elephant care center. This elephant on this side of the utility is Barry. So Debbie was the one inside of the, uh, the excuse me the care center. She was born. Or she actually just turned 45 uh, about a month ago. Uh, so she's our second oldest elephant, and then right in front of the utility is Mary, who and she is our oldest elephant. So the utilities are those big cementry-like structures that you've probably seen scattered throughout the elephant habitat. That is one of the main food sources that the elephants have in their habitat. It also works as an enriching experience for the elephants because we are encouraging their natural behavior of them reaching up and trees to get their food just like they would out in the wild. And they also have food puzzles on them as well, which is that little graded area down at the very bottom. They have a chain that they can pull back and forth on all of this. The cameras can go for a few days without eating a single or even a blood, all 22 of the California condors. And we had one egg sitting in an incubator for a while. The first chick to be hatched was Cisco. He went on to find about 17 other birds. And that was just the first episode in leading the fight against extinction for our condors. But I'm proud to announce that due to our continued effort.
One of the biggest things that the rat and them was lead poisoning, since they are scavengers, they like to eat off of dead carcasses. We uh, jump in a hornbill's vocal in here. Uh, right next door, you also find a clip. The clip's from the fish rock that runs as well, fungus Right behind that is the African survival habitat as well. Now, if you're on the pedestrian path on the right hand side, you will eventually hit a fourth orange size and most bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, pigeon toes, so which both of those do help them climb the trees, which is pretty useful for them because they are arboreal bears, which means they can spend more time in the trees than they do on the ground. But the, my favorite thing about the sock bears are those big bushy ears. They are the only species of bears I can hear their cubs on their backs, so they use those ears. Those guys, rifle lines, can collaborate with organizations from around the world to help find uh, innovative. 